Carrie Stevens fly today. This is the hammerhead. Interesting little streamer fly in that the, the wing is something she's done in others in terms of there's the orange hackle and the black hackles are a little bit shorter than the orange. She's done that in a number of patterns. Shoulder of golden pheasant is, uh, has also been done in a number of patterns. But the throat on this is actually two different colors. It's an orange schloppen and a black schloppen. And I have chosen to tie the black a little shorter than the orange because that's how the black is in the wing. Not necessarily how the recipe is designed, but that's just what I chose to do. But it's a fun fly to tie, interesting combination of materials. That's the hammerhead. I'll get started tying. start my hammerhead with hook and device. This is a Mustad R79, a size 4. It's a 9x long streamer hook. Go ahead and debarb that. Now for thread, I'm starting out. There is a uh, red floss body on this, so I'm going to start out with white. I'm using a Wapsie 210 denier in white. The only reason I'm not using a 140 is because I am out of 140 denier. Otherwise, I'd use something a little thinner. But this isn't really going to bulk things up or anything. And the 210 will allow me to get from one end of the hook shank to the other a little bit quicker. I'm going to attach my thread about two thirds of the way down the hook shank. There is a tip of this, there's no tail. There's a red floss body and then a silver rib. So I'm using a Danville silver and gold mylar in a size 14. Because there's no tail on this, I can tie in the tinsel right now that will be used for the tip as well as the rib. Tie that with the gold side up. I'm going to wrap down just a little bit beyond the point of the hook. I'm going to wrap back up maybe about a quarter of the shank. You can go a little bit further if you want to. Some people like a little bit shorter floss body. That's fine. So for floss, I'm using a Danville four strand. This is the last bit of my spool. I'm using a Danville four strand in red. If you need to have this ultra smooth underneath, then you can make this the length of the body. I'm not that concerned. This is not going to put that much of a bump into it. And it does allow me to maximize the length of this little piece of floss as that spool is spent. I'm going to flatten the thread out a little bit here. That allows me to get from one end of the shank to the other a little bit quicker. Once I'm up into the head space here, I'll let that thread hang and now I'm going to apply the floss body.
careful when you get down to the very end in that I don't want this slipping out of my fingers. So slow it down a little bit so that that does not slip out of your fingers. tip as well as the rib. never tied any of these Gary Stevens flies and this is the first time you've looked at any videos on tying these feather wing streamers. They're a little bit different than your traditional wet flies. Your traditional wet flies and even some of your classic salmon flies all have a set number of wraps for the rib. These do not. They can end up being 9, 10, 11, 12 depending on the length of the body. The more important thing is, is that you try to have all of them evenly spaced. So now the hammerhead has a black head with an orange band, which means I'm going to be using an orange thread and eventually put two black bands on it so that I have a nice pronounced orange stripe. I'm using a UTC, no, excuse me, a uni thread 80 and orange. I'm going to attach my thread now, trapping in that white thread as I work my way back, and then trim both of those away. So the hammerhead has a two component belly to it. This one has some peacock hurl. I'm just using some strong hurl here for the belly as well as some white bucktail. So I'll get five to six strands of peacock hurl together. Try to keep those fairly even. Even if they're not all matched up, I, I don't want an abrupt ending. I like a little more taper to it. That's fine. I'm going to tie these in so they extend maybe about three eighths to half an inch. Pass the bend of the hook. A few wraps to secure. If you have any small nymph flies that you like to tie for trout that need some peacock in it, you might consider saving these little bits that you get from the leftovers from these streamer flies because they're very good to use for that purpose. Now, it also has some white bucktail in it. So I've clipped out some bucktail and cleaned it. You can stack this if you want. I tend not to because I would rather have a, more of a natural taper to it. I'm going to make this as long as the peacock. So that will go right up underneath the peacock and get tied in same place. One of the interesting things about the hammerhead fly is the throat, because the throat on this is orange hackle and then black hackle on top of it. There's different ways you could do that. What I'm going to do, let me explain first real quick. The wing on the hammerhead is an orange hackle first, and then it is a black hackle that's a little bit shorter than the orange. It has a uh, cheek, no, a shoulder of golden pheasant, and then the jungle cock cheek. So that's kind of where the orange and black throat comes from. 
So when you're doing this, be a little bit careful because if you if you have a certain volume you like to make the throat in the three different parts, you want to make certain you're taking about half of the orange and half half of that volume is orange and in black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my orange up here about halfway down the body. And I'm going to tie the orange in first. I found that in the long run, it is easier to tie this in first and then the black on top. I tried a few times to tie in, you know, the orange on one stage and then the black. And it just became more cumbersome than to just tie in all the orange first and then all the black. Another thing I like to do with this is to, because the wing is a shorter black hackle on it, I like to tie these in with the black just a little bit shorter than the orange. I think it just kind of keeps in with the style of the overall fly. But that's not a uh, definitive part of the recipe. Uh, as far as I know, they were all the same length, but I just kind of like the look of that. And now I'll go through and put all of the black hackles in. But like I said, I'm just going to put those in a little bit shorter. So once this is done, if your wings are already processed like mine are, then we just tie in the wings and finish off the head and the fly is done. And be careful not to let that get too unwieldy up there in the head area. Before I tie in the wing, I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. Just so smooth all of that off in preparation of the wing. So, there we go. The wing, as I pointed out, is the orange hackles with a slightly shorter black hackle on the outside, shoulder of golden pheasant, and a cheek of jungle cock. I'm gonna put those wings together, getting the tips evened up. Trim away the extra rachis on this, leaving me just enough to tie that in. Then I'm going to tie in one side and then the other. Take your time when tying these in because you want to make certain that you're getting them in nice and in line with the plane of the hook. You want them, they generally are going to be at a little bit of an upward angle 
You're not going to have the feathers running straight down the side here like this because you want that belly and that flash to come out just a little bit while fishing the fly. With those tied in, I'm now going to secure all of this and fill this in, smooth it all off for the head of the fly. Again, if this is the first time you're watching one of these videos for Carrie Stevens streamers, often she has, the heads of these will have a colored band in them. They're black with a red, black with an orange, whatnot. Well, you can do that if you want in that regard where you make the head all black and then put in a yellow band, or not yellow, but an orange band or red band. Problem is, is that in order to get that color to stand out well enough, you have to put so many thread wraps on that you're actually making a bump, like a ridge in the middle of the head of that colored thread. The better way to go about that is to, as I said earlier, start out with the orange or the red, which is going to be the banded color. And then once you have the head done like this, I'm going to attach a Danville 6 aught in black, and I'm just going to make the, the black band in the back and in the front. And that will easily mask over the orange. The bands on these are generally whatever your head space ends up being, the bands are about one third. So if you want a more pronounced middle band, you certainly could put that in. Just careful with your wraps. Don't get too wild with them in terms of doing this step because you can very easily get one that goes somewhere you don't want it. And next thing you know, you're chasing it, trying to get it covered up. And you end up with, again, a more pronounced band, like a bump of thread in the head. So once that's in place, I'll put in about a five turn whip finish here, reattach my thread. And make the front band. I have found that when I'm putting the hook finish in the front here, I'm much better off just come down to the eye of the hook, put about a five turn whip finish right behind the eye of the hook. If I try to do it from the back of this black band forward, a lot of times as I'm cutting the thread or pulling on the thread, it slides down uh, that thread, that slope, and I end up with a little bit of a mess in there to clean up. So I'll put some head cement on the head here. This will soak down in and seal up that head, cement it all together really nice and sturdy. And then I'm going to come back and put a, uh, a layer of a clear lacquer on it to give it a little bit more durability, gives it a little bit more sheen, and it just helps the fly, the, the head, be a little bit stronger. So there is the hammerhead. Handsome little fly. 
The first one I've run across so far that has a throat with two different colors on it. Thought that was rather interesting. So that's the Carrie Stevens hammerhead. Thanks for watching today. Thank you for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned a new pattern, at least a tip or trick here and there. If you'd like to help dress irons, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things for the video. You can also head out to dressedirons.com where you can buy flies, tools, stickers, and merch, or you can join a growing community over on Locals at the Dressed Irons Fly Tying Guild. You can also donate to Dressed Irons if you want through the link at the bottom of the description. I thank everybody for their ongoing support as it really does help the creation of these videos. But what's important is to remember, only fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Thank you.